This guys is the new Bose Quiet Comfort earbuds. And to be honest, I've resisted reviewing Bose products on this channel for the longest time for a couple reasons. Brand loyalty to Bose is so strong that any objectively made reviews I feel by myself or others is basically pointless. That's why I haven't done it for a long time. We can say things negative to return blue, but Bose loyalists will always be, I want the next new product, oh Amar Bose, give it to us, I'll sell a kidney for it even, like bugs to a light or something. And secondly, studies have shown that among the most top trusted brands by 50 year olds and above is get this, Bose. So Bose is like an old person brand and we can't have any of that on this channel. No, I just kid actually. I love 50 year olds and above. I just turned 44, so basically I'm in that same demographic. But anyways, the QC is brand new and Bose brags that this has the best active noise cancellation in the industry. Let's find out if this is true or totally bogus after these messages. Let's do it guys. <laughs> Alright guys, so here is the Bose Quiet Comfort earbuds and these things are not cheap. They're gonna set you back $280. They come in two different colors, black and this one called Soapstone. It has 10 levels of active noise cancellation which is really nice to have because a lot of earbuds, it's either on or off but at least these ones have 10 different levels they can play with. There's four mics on board altogether, two mics per side and it weighs 8.4 grams per earbud and 77 grams for the case, both of which are really near identical to the Sony WF. 1000 XM3. These things have Bluetooth 5.1 on board with SBC and AAC support. Unfortunately, Aptex is nowhere to be found. And also unfortunately, this thing is only rated at IPX4 water resistance. I wish it was a little bit higher at this price range. Now in terms of battery life, the factory rates the earbuds at 6 hours and the case adds another 18 hours. During my time of testing, I got a little bit more than that actually, 6.5 hours with active noise cancellation to the max. And these things also pair with a companion app called Bose Music. Alright guys, so here is the case up close and in white, this thing looks not bad at all. It's grippy and nice to hold in the hand, uh, but it's a bear to keep clean guys. So if you don't want to be wiping this down every few seconds, get the black one. Build quality is pretty decent. As you can hear, there's some rattle, but that's from the uh, earbud itself. The, the lid itself stays pretty nice and tight when I squeeze them and the hinge as well, they don't, they don't creak at all. USB-C charging port at the back and the wireless charging pad is at the bottom. That strange reflection that you see is actually all the fine print and the certification. Yeah, it kind of threw me off at first. I thought it was some kind of tape residue or something or scratches, but yeah, there you go. Now over the front of the case, you find five LED lights that tell you the battery level of the case. Each one's 20%. And this right here is the button to release the lid. And I really find this as one of the cheapest and also poorly implemented uh, lid mechanisms out there. Really, this is the worst by far because to press this, you have to try a few times. Every time I have to do a few times because the way I hold this, sometimes my fingertips could be blocking that part of the lid or the hinge itself. So you really have to hold it right, just right, and then press it to get it open. And you see even then the, the catch is a little bit too strong or the spring is not strong enough. But when it does open, there's this little soft release uh, with the spring loaded mechanism in there. And by the way, whenever this catch pops into the lid just a little bit, the lights will come on either way. When it's released or when you put it in, put it back, it does that and tells you the battery level. Now, on the inside of the case, at the top lid here, there's this soft rubber molding that kind of acts like a bumper for the uh, earbuds itself. And I'll tell you why I think it's here as well as the button too. Now, I've taken out one of the earbuds so you can better see the cavity itself. It's nice and wide, but it's made of shiny plastics. It's easy to clean with a Q-tip, but I can imagine the black one especially, the black colored one, is gonna show a lot of grease and dirt and hair and such really easily. Here are the charging pins on the left and right and flanking this little uh, magnetic pin right there or the metal pin that matches with the magnet in the earbud. This is the pairing button right here. And let's put back the earbud itself and do the shake test. And I'll tell you why this exists and this button exists. Now, I've tested this earlier and these magnets really do suck and you see they just fall right out like nobody's business. So my reasoning for this bumper is when you have these in the case, and when you close it, you can hear the rattle. If it wasn't for the bumper, it's just gonna be rattling around because of the weak magnets. And same thing with this with this button release, release is, is just to hold the whole thing in place. So yeah, that's the case in a nutshell. 
All right, guys, now let's take a closer look at the earbud itself. And I'll tell you what, this thing is humongous. It's really, really bulky. Now, if you're a fan of old school Bluetooth devices, though, this is probably a cup of tea, you know, the kind that sits outside your jaw. And this thing actually protrudes about four millimeters away from my earlobe at the best. So it is really bulky. I'm not a fan of it. And some of you may not even like that as well. Now, the color might make a difference if you get the black one because this, as it is, has pearlescent effects at the front here and also glossy plastics around the surround. So the black one might be a little bit more discreet. Come on, focus, guys. Now, when you compare this with, say, the Amazon Echo Buds that also have a Bose noise cancelling, albeit older tech, look at the size difference. Man, and the second gen is coming out soon and it's around the same size. So there's going to be some size competition right there. Now, one of my favorite bits about these earbuds is the uh, ear tips, wing tips and earbud combo. This thing is one whole piece silicone. It's the easiest to take on and off I've ever experienced. Look at that. Taking it off is just like that. And putting it back on, it'll lock in place just like slipping your arm through a sleeve. It's so easy and quick just like that. And boom, you're done. The ear tips are oval and shaped like an umbrella to better provide a passive seal, or at least supposedly. Now, behind this window is the proximity sensor and it works by pausing and resuming your media when you take it in and out of your ear. It doesn't get tricked up really easily unless you have your finger right there, then it does mess it up from time to time. Now, the uh, charging pins are right here, connectors, and this slot right there matches or mates with the magnet in the case. At the top here is one of the microphones, at the back here is the second one, and down here are all the venting ports for the bass as well. Here's the touchpad that accepts double taps and holes, as well as more recently slide up and down for volume control and that's one of the reason more recent updates and right here behind a hidden window is the LED light as well now when I pop off the ear buds itself or ear tips there's a six millimeter driver doing all the job right business right here and it's covered by and the sound port is covered by a mesh grill in here six millimeters is one of the smallest I've seen so far but I guess there's a lot of processing going on back here to make up for that All right guys, instead of the usual app walkthrough that we normally do, I'm gonna do a run through instead from now on because I've been watching myself in the past few videos and honestly, I take way too long and talk too much in those videos. So this is gonna be a quicker version where we talk about some high level stuff and the quirks and non quirks that jump out at me, at least for the app itself. So the app you wanna get is called Bose Music. There's a few of them others out there, but the one you wanna get for the QC earbuds is Bose Music. And once you connect the earbuds, this is the main screen you come to and it'll show you all the connected Bose products. If you notice, uh, the battery level for the left earbuds are listed here as well as in the next screen. And some of you more uh, eagle eye people might say, hey, the left and right are identical in percentage. That's pretty good, right? Because the ones that we've tested so far in the past tend to vary from two to 7%, a pretty big variance. But I noticed that the Bose earbuds, they, are, they change percentage in 5% increments. So they don't actually show what the variance is between the two. For what it's worth, that's a little more information. For the battery level for the case, you have to check the case itself. Now, once you tap this, you get to the main screen where you control a whole bunch of stuff right here. There are some quick widgets or quick shortcuts at the bottom here. Um, the battery level is shown again. The volume slider is right here. Actually, you have, to, you have to slide it, but you can't really tap the volume itself, which would be nice if you could just tap what you want because as opposed to that, the noise cancellation one, you can tap it based on different levels and slide it as well. So that's a slight disparity in ergonomics here. Uh, but anyways, the volume slider is right here. When you have any media playing, it shows right down here and you can control it or in one screen, skipping tracks and such. A uh, noise cancellation, there's 10 different levels and when you go down all the way to the minimum, it is pass through mode. So I'm gonna slide that all the way back up. Favorites right here is if you double tap your left earbud, you get to change between your different uh, sound or noise cancellation settings at favorite one, two, and three. And you can see here it's set to 10 maximum, five medium, and then zero completely off. It'd be nice to rename them. They only list it as favorite one, two, three. If you can rename them to like say travel environment or sports games or wife talking or something like that, that would be uh, super nice. Um, then the source, this is one of the really nice things about this where you can connect and control. You can, I think if I remember correctly, connect up to eight different devices and then you can switch between them right here on this screen. So I can turn off my XL and then connect to my Chrome if it's on. 
And one thing nice about these earbuds is when you power them on and if none of your devices are on, you can hear the earbuds cycle between all your different devices. Like I want to connect to my, it will say, I'm trying to connect to the Pixel 2 XL. And then if it doesn't work, you go to the Chrome. So that's a quick way to connect to your different devices is just to keep them off and then it'll connect to the right one. So when you tap the gear icon on the top right, it'll take you to settings. And this is where you see some of the weaknesses of these earbuds is there's a lack of control or customization of the onbar controls as well as, as some of you may notice, there's no equalizer. So if you wanna play with sound, forget about it. Now, the first one I wanna show you is under controls here, in your detection. So you can set different things. You can turn on and off in your detection, basically. Like say, in this case, auto pause play. When I take the right earbud off or left earbud off, the uh, proximity sensor will just stop the media. You can turn it off if you want. And also you can auto answer call when you insert the right side. And also when you take any of the, ear, the right side earbud off, the left side will go into full transparency mode. It's kind of disconcerting the first time you hear it and some of you may never get used to it. So if you don't want it, you can always turn it off. Now let's back up one screen and check out shortcut. And on this screen, you can customize the really bare bones hold command on your left earbud. So when I toggle this on, Guys, these are the only two things you can do. One is to hear the battery level, which is honestly kind of pathetic and sad. And skip forward. You can't do backwards or volume control. In fact, these earbuds doesn't have single tap or uh, triple tap or anything like that, which would have been super nice. So maybe a firmware update can rectify that problem. Now, back out here, we see self voice. If you like to hear yourself talk, you probably want to set it to high, but doing phone calls. But if you like it off, you don't like to hear yourself talk and want to hear more of the other party, just set it to off, low or medium or something like that. Down here is voice assistant. You can customize or set which voice assistant you want if you have more than one. And that's really all there is to the app. There's nothing much to it. There's, uh, I haven't gotten any kind of firmware update, so I don't know how that looks like. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure also what the frequency of that is like. This is the app in a uh, nutshell. And as you can see, there's no equalizer and not much controls or customization on the, for the onboard controls on the earbuds. So I think it's time for me to shut up right now, just for a second, to thank you guys and a pat on your shoulder and a little bravo for getting me to 5,000 subs. Yes, we're finally there guys. 5,000 subs is all thanks to you. My next target is 10,000. So pass the word, tell your friends and family. And if you're watching, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing to this channel as well. Mash and kill that button. So get me to 10,000. That's our next new target. On with the program, that way. All right guys, we're out here doing the Bluetooth distance test now and I have some high and drive by Radiohead playing on Deezer on my Pixel. And I'm gonna put the Pixel at the end of my deck here. And we're gonna do this scientific test where we walk a certain distance to see when these guys disconnect from the source. So there's the phone. How are you guys doing? It's really cold right now. Uh, so I'm gonna try to do this quickly. So these have Bluetooth 5.1, so theoretically it should last around 30 to 33 feet uh, before they start sputtering and disconnecting. There's the phone right there. And where I'm standing is around 25 feet, still playing very strong, but I'm gonna walk around the corner of the house here, past line of sight a little bit, and I'm starting to get sputtering already. And right here is around 30 feet, so it's acting normally. Now I'm gonna keep walking to completely disconnect. At this point, the sputtering is so bad that it's pointless to listen to anything. Uh, there it is, it disconnected right there. I just got a tone. That's around 38, 39 feet. So it's industry standard, nothing special about it. Now, you can see the fit of these in my ear and they're really, they really protrude out quite far out. Not my favorites, they're kind of like uh, the 1000XM3s by Sony, but a little bit more too. So some of you may be turned off by this completely and I completely understand. The fit though is not bad, it stays in place. Uh, but the downside to Bose using one single piece for the ear tip and the fin, it's just one whole molding as we saw earlier, is that everybody's ratio or distance from their anti-helix to the eardrum is different. So for me, my right side is a little bit off, so the fin tends to pop out from time to time and then needs readjusting. So, you know, take it for what it is. There's the fit for you right there. All right, guys, something weird just happened. And for context, this is the very last day of filming and actually the very last segment that I was saving up to film the Bluetooth phone call test. I just did the Bluetooth distance test a second ago. And right now, for some reason, the earbuds don't, won't power on. It was fine a second ago. I took a break, put the earbuds back in to charge and I took them back out. They wouldn't power back on. The battery case has full battery level and the earbuds, as when back when I tested it earlier, it was 85%. So I don't think there's a problem there, but for some reason, it won't power on. So I've Googled, searched everything, and no one has mentioned any problems with these. So if you're watching this, 
that means it didn't work and I really apologize if I was really wanting to show you or demonstrate how these guys handle uh, noise cancellation for you but I tested these earlier and they're pretty average pretty good at noise suppression in a noisy environment in the busy street right here um, and voice quality is pretty good as well uh, there's really good intonation it sounds a little mechanical and suppressed but it has good volume uh, but other than that I wish I could figure out what's going on here so maybe some of you can chime in if you've heard of problems like this maybe this is so new that you know maybe these are just teething problems all right guys now let's check out some of my favorite things about these earbuds and first of all is that active noise cancellation the system that they use is so good at nullifying low frequencies it's so effective against jet engines for example I took these on a plane ride and man, it was such a revelation on the plane. Even at the airport itself in the terminal, voices and conversations also soften up into the background and started to sound like what you hear on Charlie Brown when Snoopy goes wah, 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 wah. It's pretty darn effective. It's not tomb-like silence. It's not industry leading like Bose claims, but it's pretty darn close. Now, the downside to noise cancellation this effective is like what the old saying says, the silence is deafening. In certain situations, the silence is almost overpowering, overpowering where there's a lot of pressure on the ear canal, like in the terminal, in the waiting area where there's a lot of noise going on, but it's not too loud. When I pop this on and turn on noise cancellation, there's a lot of pressure built up in the ear canal or ear drum, it seems. And some of you may not like that effect. Now, the way to solve this problem is to go into app and just turn down the noise cancellation in the first place and then just work yourself up. Another of my favorite things is the very good sound quality. It is really well balanced, in fact, for most genres, so most of you listeners would find something to like. Now, it is not a bass thumper by any means, but one of my favorite parts about these buds is the bass response. It is tight and solid all the way through. Percussions, oh, it sounds so good on these. They're clear and true to life. It's not even funny. But that being said, the weak point of this is probably the highest. They just don't sing as well as the mids do. But overall, I think the sound profile is pretty flat in a good way. When I listen to Elton John's Rocket Man, for example, man, the stereo separation from left to right, oh, it is so good and very nice and distinct. But these earbuds are one of the more centrally located buds that I've listened to in a while. So in terms of staging, it's almost non-existent. It's pretty normal for earbuds, but really it's so centralized, I can't really tell where instruments and singers are, where they sit in space. Uh, so that's really one of the downsides to these buds. All right, guys, now let's look at some of the things that I do not like about the Quiet Comforts. And it's a long list, so I'm going to try to shoot through it as quickly as I can. The first one of all is that non-customizable sound. Now, I understand most of Bose users just want to put these on and forget about them, but some of us like to tune our sounds to our liking. Now, when I hear or see a manufacturer not include an equalizer, I think of one thing. They don't want us to find the weak points of their components. It's probably that the Quiet Comforts are already tuned to their max, and any kind of adjustments or shift in the tuning would just show flaws and weaknesses in the driver material and also the processing. So that's my guess. But for $280, come on Bose, where is the equalizer? And secondly is that sad control scheme for the touchpads. It lacks customization. I can't have track backwards or volume up and down. And what makes it worse too is also there's lack of audio feedback whenever I depress any of the buttons so I never know whether I activated the function or not. And speaking of audible feedback, Whenever there is voice prompts that do play on these earbuds, for some reason, they sound like a female Stephen Hawking. So maybe Bose has a secret crush on him or something, but really for $280, it sounds really cheap. Another couple of annoying things that I hope are fixed by firmware updates is very occasionally, every hour or so, there is a signal pop. When audio is playing, there is just this pop, like a popcorn kernel going pop. It just does that and it goes away and then every hour or so, it comes back again. My second problem is also when I have these earbuds off when the audio is off due to the proximity sensor and then when I put this back in, in other earbuds the audio starts playing together simultaneously uh, pretty much on sync. But on these earbuds the left side will play for about a second before it's joined by the right side. And occasionally it does a flip flop. This will play first for a second or two and then join by this. It's really disconcerting and just feels weird to me. And lastly I thought oversized cases and earbuds were behind us. And yet, here they are. So here are my final thoughts, guys. Bose definitely got the active noise cancellation right on these quiet comforts, and the sound is another highlight. But everything else feels like a compromise from the size to the battery life to the price to the lack of customization. And these QCs actually remind me of other Bose products like the QC35s. While being effective active noise cancellation devices, 
they're boring as heck to look at and just not very exciting. So what Bose's earbud division needs is like a Bose 700 headphone equivalent, something that looks stylish and modern while being effective at the same time. So I wanna give the Bose QuietComfort earbuds a gear up score of seven and a half out of 10. While there's a lot of things to like about this, there's also a lot of things that I don't like about it. But what do I know? It's still gonna sell like hotcakes during Christmas because nothing can stop Bose fans. Well, there you have it guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode and please come back next Friday for a new one. And I hope next week we have better weather than this because right now there's a storm passing through, 60 mile an hour winds, lots of rain, no Wi-Fi. at least we got electricity and exposure in this studio feels like nighttime, but it's actually noon right now. So join me next week for a new episode. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subs and only you can get me there. So thank you in advance for your support. Visit my Patreon page down here too, where you can buy me a cup of coffee or tea or something like that and help me financially. And remember to thumbs up if you like this video as well and comment nicely down below. And thumbs down, hmm. thumbs down to man-made beaches. Yes, I have a beef with man-made beaches. You know, those white manicured sand beaches. I don't think that's a proper representation of man-made anymore. I think we, what we should do is collect all the trash and junk in the ocean, dump it on our beaches, and there you go, man-made beaches. Anyways, that's all I got, guys. Thank you so much for being here again. Remember to come back next week for a new episode, and remember to do something nice and kind for somebody. Remember to mask up too. I love you guys. Peace out.